Hey everybody, welcome back to the Behaviour Revolution Scriptures. My name's Mark, and we're going into season four today, Bamidbar, or what we've commonly been taught was called Numbers. Um, and it's really amazing where we've been going with this, isn't it? I mean, Yahushua's talking to his bride all over the globe, and things I'm seeing pop up on Facebook, and people I know, and other teachers, and people, stuff's coming out. And it's all relating, it's all about Yahushua wanting his bride to overcome and choose him. Choose him instead of himself. To be a light in this world. How do we be a light? We learned about how to be a light a few episodes ago in season three. We have to be consumed. We have to surrender. The self has to die. The old man, the flesh. Talking a lot about the flesh lately, the flesh. All the things that want to control us and addict us and, you know, have us thinking about all the time, you know, certain foods that are unhealthy, habits, lusts of the flesh, lusts of the eyes and the pride of life. So we're not going to waste any time. We're going to get straight in. I want to make these episodes a bit shorter. So we're going to get straight into the Behaviour Revolution Scriptures, Bamidbar. So Bamidbar means uh, in the wilderness. So we've got our wilderness there. I'm not going to go through all these introductory notes because it's the same for everyone I'm putting out, except for a few changes. I'll go through the changes. Remember last last season at the beginning, we went through the the one true language. The one true language is a behaviour because you can learn it no matter what nation you are brought up in. The one true language is a true behaviour. It's not learning Hebrew. Learning Hebrew is not where it's at. The foundation of our belief is based on Hebrew, but today we speak English, or whatever country you're in, you speak it. So it doesn't have to be a language we speak, a language we learn, it's a behavior that we exercise and we perform a behavior. We learn and grow in a certain behavior and character and lifestyle. That's what it is. It, 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 this behavior stands the test of time and space and also language. So while the original language was Hebrew, yes it was, yes it was, um, we don't speak it today, do we? And those who do speak Hebrew aren't speaking the same Hebrew that, you know, Yahushua spoke in the beginning. So research, uh, Hebrew is great for research, bring back the truth, make sure you're standing on the right foundation, but your behaviour has got to be 21st century, hasn't it? Otherwise you're just a weird, weird cuckoo. Freaky deep, mate. It's mad. We talked about the path. This, uh, these scriptures use the name of Yahushua from beginning to end. We've already established that. Uh, the Father is the Son. The Son is the Father. Yahushua came in the name of the Father. So wherever I can, wherever I possibly can, I'm as part of the narration saying Yahushua did this. Yahushua said that. And Musha spoke to Yahushua, and Yahushua spoke. It's all Yahushua because it was Yahushua. We just didn't know it at the time. They didn't know it at the time, but it was Yahushua. You know, Yahushua is the son and Yahushua is the father. Got it? Because Yahushua means Yahuwah is my deliverance. Yahuwah, the father, is my deliverance. Yahuwah, the father, came to earth, took on flesh to become our deliverance. And now that he died and ascended, he has an, a first fruits, everlasting, immortal body, which is flesh. You can touch it. He's alive, but he's also a spiritual body as well. He can move through walls. It's it's a creation that we've never seen before. No one can say they, they've seen that or experienced that because he was the first fruit of a huge harvest. Well, hopefully, it might be a small harvest, but he's the first fruit of a harvest. So, so I'm not gonna go into all that. The portal, we've been talking about the portal the last five or six episodes. These portal articles have been phenomenal. The portal is really just explaining what well, the Hebrew word is shamaim, shamaim. That just means where he is. But what's that in English? What does that mean to us in English? You could say in the sky. Yeah, but it's actually another dimension. Realize that? Yahushua is in the other dimension, right here. He's not even in the sky. He's right here with us. Imagine this earth times two sitting on top of one another in a different dimension. 
you know. He's in the true dimension and we're in the ups we're in the upside down. For those of you who watch Stranger Things, we're in the upside down, the filthy world, and he's got the amazing, pristine, wonderful world. We've got the world full of demons. And we're in the upside down. But it's right here, that's the point I want to make. It's right here. Just in another dimension. So he could just go zip because it's an invisible seam, remember? He could just go zip, poke his head through and go, get out. But that it's inside us. And we have open portal doorway, direct access to the throne room. So we can zip, talk to the father and come back out again. And like I've been saying, come out with fruits, come out with correct behavior, communicating all day, praying, communicating without ceasing. Why? It says right there, because he loved them so very much. This is all about love, guys. We can walk in the light with Yahusha as his bride because he loves us so very much. Forge a relationship with Yahusha. This is the one I want to talk about today. This came up yesterday. What about that dragon? Is your day like that? My day's like that. Is your day like that? That poor guy there chopping off serpents' heads all day, every day? That's what my day's like. And you know, sometimes they bite me. And you know, you've got to go to Yahusha and get the get the antidote and uh, get sobered up again. Most of the time, this is my day, fighting, de fighting demons. I don't have to go out there like a zombie hunter. I don't have to go out there, they come to me. I, I, I'm in a family of 10 people, so you know, minute I open my eyes in the morning and I work in the general public. I have a shop on Main Street, so you know, there's all sorts of people dragging their feet up the street and can you give me a haircut right now? What? Yeah, yeah. So, we all understand the walk. You gotta enjoy it. It's how we make money. So, this is the fruits and the armor of Yahusha are all set apart. The fruits, we've been talking about the fruits, all those fruits that I had shooting towards you. The fruits and the armor of Yahusha are all set apart. So the armor, sword, shield, breastplate, helmet, you know, and the fruit. I've never heard of it like this before. When have we ever been told that the fruit of the spirit are weapons? The fruit of the spirit are our warfare. This is fresh, guys. Yahushua's talking to us. The fruit of the spirit, uh, you know, I mean, I know we've had the, the three rules and they've been great and helpful, and, but these are actually really hitting the point. You know, you come, whenever you've got a problem, a situation, someone's in your face, like this, or your kids, or your wife, husband, wife, you just hold it together, take a deep breath, and while you're having that breath, go into your portal and come out with a fruit, sword, shield, fruit. Which fruit might be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trusting, trustworthiness, gentleness, self-control. They're the only fruits that we're supposed to behave. Doesn't mean you can't speak out in anger at times, particularly if you rearing children but most of the time nine i mean how effective is anger anyway you know it doesn't go anywhere um best to be performing practicing exercising these fruits so the fruits and the armor of yahushua are all set apart what does set apart mean clean we've been talking a lot about set apart haven't we set apart just means clean from the contaminations of this world's ways of living. And it's the only way we can wield the weapons of warfare, which is our calling. That's our calling, you know. The only way we can wield the weapons of warfare is if we're clean. This is why we are called out from death, because there is nothing else to live for, really. One part of clean in the Hebrew shows us the road we must travel to become clean. Bara, which is to clarify, brighten, examine, select, make bright, choice, chosen, cleanse, be clean, clearly, polished, show self, pure. I've lost a line there, it should say purged. I've lost a line there. The last line said purge. So the word must, the world must be purged from our behavior to understand our calling. The world must be purged from our behavior. Got that? 
not from our food, not from our fashion, not from our looks necessarily, not from our jobs, not from our marriage, not from, we don't come to Yahushua and have and run, flee to the mountains and live like hippie. We don't have to do that. Purge from our behavior. We overcome in our behavior. And I mean, take what I'm saying and understand it. If you if you're wearing clothes like a whore showing all your skin off, well, yeah, your clothing's got to change, men or women. But, you know, and if you're eating unclean animals, yeah, well, that's got to change because that's unclean. The whole point of this is to be clean. But you see what I'm saying, though? It's not about external things. Yahushua only has a handful of external things he's interested in, and the majority of our overcoming is in our behaviour, you know? So the world must be purged from our behaviour to understand our calling. Remember, our warfare is not against people. Warfare is a behavior which walks on Yahushua's word. Are you having problems in your home? Are you getting emotional and caught up in all the dramas and intrigues and problems that your husbands, wives and children bring towards you? Remember, our warfare is not against people. Are you facing that every single person Every single person in your day, if they are not behaving the nine fruits, only nine, every single person in your day is controlled by an unclean, filthy spirit. And they want you to forget about them and hate the person. Get frustrated with the person, angry at the person, judge the person, and they're very happy to have you in that place. And they run away pointing and laughing their heads off at how stupid you are how stupid I am because they're not, we're not seeing them we are not fighting people our warfare is not against people warfare is a behavior which walks on Yahushua's word you've got to face that everybody in your day if they're not with Yahushua if they're not and even the ones that are with Yahushua if they don't have this understanding and they're not behaving the fruits you've got to have your armor strapped on completely and you behave the fruits because they can't they're either too immature or they're not part of the bride. They're not interested in Yahushua. They're in the world. They're unclean. And you can't expect any good fruit from that, behavior from that. So regarding this warfare in Ephesians 6, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, authorities, world rulers of the darkness of this age. World rulers of the darkness of this age and against spirit-like entities. Spirits in high places. Spirit-like entities of wickedness in the skies. Mm, they're coming from everywhere. This scripture certainly shows us there are unclean spirits, spirit-like entities of wickedness, controlling men and women of this age. And they are in the airwaves, causing fear and hatred against Tura. The only way to defeat them is through the clean behavior of the armor and the fruits. The only way to defeat them in your day is through clean behavior, which is anything Yahushua permits, and the armor and the fruits provided for those who love Yahushua. Provided for those who love Yahushua. You don't have to do this. Oh, why don't you stop talking about this stupid portal and these ridiculous fruits and this and that and this and that. We want to talk deep, philosophical, theological, blah, 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 blah. you know, like, that's fine. Go on, there's stacks of idiots out there that are talking about all that stuff. It, if you're here, it means you want something fresh. And this is fresh. This is amazing to me. Not for me. You know, I, I'm just looking for the fresh stuff too. I'll take it wherever it's coming from. So... These fruits and armor can only be used by those in a portal door relationship. Portal door relationship. The door, portal door. Understand that? I've done lots of videos about the portal door. Look on the Behavior Revolution, top of the Behavior Revolution Facebook page. There's a link there and videos to all, to all the portal information. So, the fruits and armor can only be used by those in a portal door relationship. Those who have been made clean, being purged by Yahushua himself. Many today have not overcome through this process. In fact, they are against it. How can you be against it? 
They say they have the fruits and the armour, but this is just of the flesh. And their behaviour is religious. They fight and argue on Facebook, etc., social media, which is not the behaviour of a true believer. So people say they're the bride. People say, oh, I know that. Yes, it's the fruit. People like to add scriptures at the bottom of the videos all the time, adding things and not saying anything, just quoting scriptures. And what's that supposed to mean? You feel like you want to say, that's great, but what are you trying to say? Yeah, you've, you've put a scripture there. What, what for? You know, people having a religious experience, learning from preachers, teachers, parts of rabbis, they're not, they're not having the portal door experience and you're watching their behaviours. So I am having the portal door experience. I fall over my own two feet every second day and I'm a complete idiot and asshole half the time, but I'm having a portal door experience and Yahushua's purging all the world out of me. I'm happy to say that. I'm on this path. Are you? Wonderful. Keep going. So I'm not going to tell you anything on here that I haven't uh, wrestled with and either experienced or am discovering myself. I haven't read half of these books properly myself. So you're going on this experience with me. And it's very exciting. Uh, reading everything through the fresh eyes of the, the Ruach, through Yahushua's spirit. So verse 9b of Ephesians again reveals the portal door. Refrain from threatening, knowing that your master is also in the higher dimension. Refrain from threatening, knowing that your master is also in the higher dimension, the portal. See, early believers knew about the portal too. The traditional translations say heaven. The original word is shamaim, which is skies or where he is. But uh, I love this higher dimension portal. And everybody knows what a portal is. Everybody's full of 21st century sky fire these days. If I said there's a portal door to another world right over there, people will know what that, that people understand that. We were brought up on Lord of the Rings and Lion Witch and the Wardrobe and all this witchcraft and madness. We all know what a portal is. Well, this is a pure, clean portal. This was the portal that sat on top of the Ark of the Blood Covenant Witness on the Mercy Seat. This was the portal. You know, back then, if you were unclean, you were zapped. So this is all tying in, guys. So let's keep going. Oh, uh, wait a second. Fighting warfare without being clean is a useless waste of time. Fighting warfare without being clean. Clean is a behavior. It's a useless waste of time. I bind you and I loose you and I have all this authority and I'm getting in your face and I'll pray for you. How many people say that? I'll put you in my prayers. Oh, please don't. Oh. oh dear. The way people talk, who talks like that? I was praying. I was in the spirit and I thought of you. Who talks like this? You know, I think, well, speak English and talk, be normal. You know, like, I talk like a normal person. That's the whole point of being a witness. Yahushua will use you first if you have the right behaviour. Why was Yahushua so effective in his walk on this earth? There were people out, there were stacks of prophets around, sprouting all sorts of knowledge when Yahushua was walking around. There was the Yahudim and the Pharisees, Prashim, all those, but there were also other religious movements walking around saying stuff. How come his was so effective? Because of what came out of his eyes, because of what was lived out because of what people felt and experienced when they were in his company because he was the living fruits the fruits made flesh the love the joy the peace he he was the the word the, the uh, made flesh the bread the light he was all of it that's why it was a behavior that affected people not what he said most of the time what he said made people angry because it was the truth but it wasn't that that affected people so much it was his behavior so if you want to affect people, if you want to be a correct witness in the 21st century, shut your mouth, take all the ridiculous paraphernalia off you, live a normal life, make friends, and just be ready, like a sleeper cell, you know? Incognito, loving people, having friends, you know? Go out and have good times with people if you've got any friends, you don't have to, you know, or whatever. But just, that's how you live it. It's through your behavior. Yahushua does everything. He'll let you know if he wants to move in somebody's life. 
you'll put them right in front of you and you'll have a choice whether to run away or stand and talk or did it open your mouth or shut up you'll have a choice he'll tell you that's the point he tells his bride everything that he's doing it's not up to you so today we're coming to Bamidbar Bamidbar in the wilderness so we'll just go through the introduction today in the wilderness remember when Musha wrote the books he used to name them after the first sentence so in the beginning was Barashith so we called it Barashith in the beginning what was Exodus? Shemoth was the names. These are the names of the sons of Jacob. So he called the book names, uh, Shemoth. And uh, Ikara, that was, uh, what was Ikara? Forgot. And he called, and he called from the tabernacle. He called Musha, and he called. So Musha called it, and he called Ikara. So this one is Bamidba, which is in the wilderness the first words of the text. In Bamidbar, Yahushua reveals more incredible patterns. Remember the patterns and mysteries for his chosen nation of Israel to make it through their wilderness experience. The books of Musha provide a history of creation from the beginning until the time when Israel was about to enter the promised land, revealing the covenant, blood covenant path for the bride to return back to the Garden of Eden, which was the promised land. Remember, that's the whole purpose of scripture, to return his promised chosen people back to the promised land so that he could marry them, establish this blood covenant, establish the Garden of Eden again. It had to be done his way. And his people kept breaking the commandments, breaking the blood covenant, letting him down. And so we'll see what happens. So it is the foundation and a framework, but there was more to come. The rest of the story is described in other texts that followed in time and scope. These other texts combined with Musha's book collectively became known as the scriptures. So what about this word numbers? Because I can tell you what, I was not excited at all to dive into a book called Numbers. Oh, I'm trying to summarize as much as I can all the numbers and genealogies and things like that. Although the more I dive into it, it does become more interesting because you start getting start remembering and getting to know certain names you think oh they showed up there and here and there and the patterns are registering but anyway could you think of a more boring name for a book numbers it's like call the accountant you've got to pull out the books talk about the books why did the translators choose to call this book of Bamidbar by the Greek term numbers even though most of it has nothing to do with numbers most of this series we're going to talk about for the next few weeks is nothing to do with numbers. This term that literally drips of boredom and financial figures was given here simply because the first few chapters of this book deal with the census taken of the Israelites per Yahushua's instruction. And after that, the exciting action begins. So because the first two or three chapters are about census, a census was taken, so they were just counting heads, really. They've called them, these Greek people, Greek philosophers, are nut jobs, aren't they? Not with the Ruach. We're not spirit filled. You should have nothing to do with it. So look, call it Numbers. Do you want to read a book called Numbers? Anyway, let's go through this introduction. The Behavior Revolution Scriptures, the Midbar. Remember, the books of Musha really carry on from one to the other. You could really package them as one book, really. All those five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you could really put into one package and call it the books of Musha, the writings of Musha. Some people call it the Torah, which is instruction, but all the books are instruction, as far as I'm concerned. So it's a religious way to look at it. Only the books of Musha are the Torah. No, all of Scripture, any time Musha speaks to you, it's Torah. Instruction too, it just means instruction. So, introduction. So it's been a year since Yisrael have been delivered from the hard bondage of Egyptian slavery. They've received the everlasting blood covenant from Yahushua at Sinai, and also the sacrificial system as a means to draw close to him and be perfected through his magnificent esteem, residing in their midst, bringing health 
healing, protection, and victory through the portal connection with his higher dimension, which is connected on the Ark of the Blood Covenant Witness. When Jacob took his family down into Egypt to be reunited with his favorite son, Yusuf, they were a mere 75 people, round about. And now, around 400 years later, Yisrael's children were close to 3 million, including the mixed multitude and everybody. About 3 million people were in the wilderness. Can you imagine that many people? We talked about that back in Exodus. The amount of water would be an Olympic pool every day, you know, to, just to, to hydrate them. An Olympic pool, 50 meter pool, you know, every day. When we think back to the discovery and colonizing of our own cultures, like I'm in Australia, most people who watch this are either in America or uh, UK. Anyway, when we think back to the discovery and colonizing of our own cultures, just over 200 years ago for the US and Australia, and we look at just how detached through apparent irrelevance we are from what the early colonies would have believed and endured in settling and establishing our current nations, we realize just how much the nation of Israel in 400 years, which is almost double that, would in no way resemble the children of Abraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov, in belief or behavior. They would have known of their heritage, the stories, beliefs and promises, but after so long, it would have meant absolutely nothing to them. Think about that. The people who, you know, 1788, I think it was, Captain Cook discovered Australia. So, you know, that was just over 200 years ago, you know, similar time when uh, Independence Day in America, all that sort of stuff, when America was discovered. So, you know, who was that? Christopher Columbus. So anyway, we're talking around about 200 years. And how detached is that? Not just in fashion or mindset or, it's just so primitive, isn't it, to us today? We learn about it at school, but you know, it's nothing to do with us. We couldn't care less. Nothing to do with our lifestyle. Well, this, that's 200 years plus. This is 400 years plus. So the people we're dealing with that came out of Egypt would in no way resemble Yusuf, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, the beliefs, the behaviors, they were completely assimilated into the Egyptian pagan lifestyle. Slavery had become their reality, their patience was gone, and the 400 year old hope of a homeland was nothing but a distant memory to them. Just as the events that led to the birth of Australia or America, which gave us the freedoms we enjoy today, are distant memories we usually don't think or care about. Yisrael had been worshipping the deities of Egypt and aside from a small few who would have been considered fanatics or dreamers, who would have held on to the sparks of Yahushua's blood covenant promises and been a constant thorn in their side, they had been lost asleep and indifferent. Until of course a dude named Musha shows up and well, we know what happens. Yisrael weren't expecting Yahushua to actually rescue them. And when Musha showed up, they ridiculed him and treated him with nothing but hostility, which is a pattern of behavior we see right through the scriptures and even today regarding the world's, the world's response to truth. In Matthew 24, Yahushua said, the coming of the Son of Man will be just as the days of Noah before the flood. For just as they were eating and drinking, marrying and being given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and they had no clue what was about to happen to them until the flood came and washed them all away. So it will be in the world before I return. So it's just, just as it is today. Eating and drinking and partying, marrying and being given in marriage. You know, there aren't going to be a huge there aren't going to be huge cataclysmic events that will occur before Yahushua returns. The world will keep turning as usual, the tides, the seasons, and the people carrying on like they always have, unaware and without any higher belief or expectation. Sick, perverse, lost, and dead. However, just as it was in Egypt, once Yahushua starts moving, it's going to be a hell of a roller coaster ride, so hold on. 
After only one year of leaving Egypt, Yahushua had delivered Yisrael, provided daily food for them, given them a new constitution, instructions, and enabled them to triumph over their enemies when they attacked. That's a pretty amazing achievement. So it's important to remember that Israel is only a year old in their belief here in the wilderness, which is what the Midbar means in the wilderness. Within an initial 24 hour period, they had been uprooted from everything they knew and loved and sent out into the wilderness of the unknown where all their insecurities and fears manifested in violent disobedience, tantrums and complaining. What was our behavior and lifestyle like and our minds after only a year of being immersed? So let's not judge Yisrael too harshly while reading of their many adventures here, because remember they're only babes in Yahusha. They're only a year in this deliverance walk. Let me come into chapter one. We'll start that in our next episode. That's enough for today. I love you guys. Stay strong and remember, this is all about your behavior and what behavior you're going to take out into your day. Your armor, your shield, your sword, your breastplate, your helmet of obedience, breastplate of right behavior, sword of the spirit of truth, isn't it? Sword of truth, shield of belief shield of belief and that's what protects us Yahushua surrounds us and he protects us he gives us this armor and then of course the fruit the fruit is our warfare are you in this warfare are you in the warfare or are you just sitting around being useless reading books and watching YouTube shows studying and we're gonna see as we go on in these videos that Yahushua is not some theological, theoretical, you know, you don't have to sit there meditating, meditating, meditating until you suddenly get a flicker of light and have no idea he talks to you, but you don't know. He's very practical. He leaves nothing to the imagination. He's very much a get off your ass and do the job. That's how Yahushua acts. So hear his thoughts. And if he says, if you're having monetary problems, hear his thoughts say, get up and hand your resumes out. Get up, have a shave, you know, Put some nice clothes on, put some perfumes, aftershave so you smell nice. Go out there and meet people and get yourself a job. Be proactive. You don't just sit there waiting for blessings to fall from the sky. You know, Yahushua is very proactive, very practical. If you're not sure what you're supposed to do in life, look around you. Is there filth? Is there mess? Is there untidiness? When was the last time you vacuumed your, your house, your bedroom? When was the last time you cleaned everything? Do you know how amazing you feel? when you look after the things Yahushua gives you? When was the last, what's the floor of your car look like? Can you see the floor of your car? You know, don't ever question and say, I don't know what to do in my life. I don't know how anybody can be bored. I mean, I know I have lots of kids, but I don't know how anybody could be bored. You know, Yahushua gives you things to do. Everything around you needs upkeep and cleaning and you know, working, get a job. If you've not got enough money, go out and get a job, it's practical. Oh, but I won't have as much time to study. Stiff, study at night, you know, do it, you know. Make a livelihood, tarry on until Yahushua gets back. Yahushua is practical. It's not some religious kook like the Eastern religions worship. No, 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 no. You have to sit there and, you know, drive your eyeballs into your skull from meditation and going cross-eyed and you don't have to do all this crap. He'll give you the thoughts, you do them and watch what happens. He'll give you another thought. He'll, you do them and see what happens. This is how you step by step build a relationship with him. It's not all theoretical. It's not all theological and religious and cuckoo. It's practical, you know? Get out of your house, get out and get a life and do something with yourself, yeah? And you feel much, how much better do you feel when all your bills are paid that week? Yeah, I'm not talking about being rich. I'm not talking about being in love with money. I'm not even talking about having much saved. I'm just talking about having all your bills paid. How amazing does it feel when you've just covered all your budgets? Yeah? Anyway, that's enough. We're going to go into more of this as we go on from chapter to chapter. So love you guys and uh, stay strong.